Hello everyone, uh, this video is a response to the comments that A.V. Owens left on my last video to her. <clears throat> she, she made five different points where she disagrees with the video that I made to her. And uh, I'm going to read each one and then uh, respond to it. Here we go. First... I don't even remember making the first video you showed. Well, you know, that it's a good thing that uh, we have video evidence of you making that statement because, you know, otherwise we couldn't say that you made it. You might want to go back on your words. But at least y you, you owned up to saying it by saying, but I stand by my belief that there are most definitely scientists who are so bent on proving a certain hypothesis that they only value the experiments that have their desired outcome. Now, my response to this is, proper application of the scientific method tries to screen for this bias, and it does a very good job. However, when some of this bias does slip through, there are two other safety nets to make sure that good science isn't tainted by these biases, one of which is called peer review. When somebody makes a, a, a scientific claim, it has to be verifiable by other scientists, you know, sometimes even around the world, that are completely untouched by any personal relations to this other scientist. And in this way, they're free from the same biases. Okay? And the second way that uh, science uh, in itself, the scientific method, uh, can correct for bias is that nothing is above questioning and re-questioning and re-verification. So even a layperson can test uh, a scientific theory that was made 200 years ago that uh, is close to becoming a law and find something wrong with it. And even scientific laws, okay, they are not beyond retesting. Okay? So, uh, I understand that you are, you are afraid of scientists having bias, and bias is a very bad thing and should be avoided. But uh, your fear of knowledge that is coming from science is troubling. Now, point number two from A.V. Owens, she says, second, I am not a creationist. Okay. I'm going to give a definition for creationism. Uh, it's the doctrine that the true story of creation of the universe is as it was recounted in the Bible, especially in the first chapter of Genesis. Now, you do have a literal translation of uh, Genesis that you're going by. And the way that you said that God made Adam and Eve genetically perfect as human beings, without having evolution lead up to that, that is a creationist viewpoint, okay? The way that you have a problem with incest happening after Adam and Eve, and you say, well, it's completely understandable after the fall of man, that's creationist viewpoint. Because, you see, the evolutionary standpoint would be that uh, when the population that would later become human beings was in its first stages as, say, a single-celled organism, that single-celled organism didn't have to reproduce sexually. So... You know, with asexual division and, and asexual reproduction, it became multiple cells as part and part of that population kept on evolving and just leaving a little bit of that population behind every kind every time it evolved a little bit. And every time it changed a little bit, it uh, grew in number. So there was never a point for the species that would, at one time become human beings, that there would ever be a problem of incest, because at the point of becoming 
uh, a sexually reproductive species rather than asexually rep reproducing, um, there were still uh, there were still some of the species that could asexually and sexually reproduce. And there were enough of the species as a population moving through time that there was no necessity for incest, as the scenario in your literal translation of Genesis uh, puts forth. So, you say that you're not a creationist, but you are. And, and I know that being labeled as a cre creationist, it, it's... Creationist has a, it's a loaded word, and, and no one wants to be a creationist when they know that there's all these people that think bad things about creationists. But, it's true. Okay? And we're, we're going to get into some more definitions later in this video. But, your third point. Third, if you read the description of God is dead, your video you would see that it was a reiteration of an essay. However inaccurate you may believe it is, is irrelevant to me. Now, it's a given to me. And I did read the description of that video before making my video. Um, I believe the numbers are inaccurate. You believe that you're just passing on numbers from somebody else, whether or not they're inaccurate. Okay. You're, you're passing on numbers you didn't fact check on. I say they're inaccurate. That wasn't the point I was trying to make. The point I was trying to draw from that video is that you posted a video saying that killing is wrong. And that's the only thing that I wanted to take from that video, is that you and I might share in common this, this idea that killing and mass murder is wrong. Then later in my video, I tried to connect that to why is it okay for your God to commit murder and mass murder and tell people to murder for him. Why can't he achieve his means without doing that? And your, your defense of this is your fourth point. Fourth, God is the author of life, there has, therefore he has complete authority to do with life as he pleases. Now, I already showed a clip of you saying that God is an objective, absolute truth machine, basically. And he just, whatever he does is right. But we know that it's not, because we, we know that killing is wrong. We know that mass murder is wrong, but somehow your God gets a pass, because you say he's the author of life, and he's got authority. And that's why it's okay for him to do bad things. But you, you see where you said in the, that other video that things that he dictates for people to do become right. You see, you see the problem here? Um, if your God tells someone to commit mass murder and that person goes out and commits mass murder, that is evil. Okay? It's not right just because your God said it's right to do that. It's not right if your God says, go out and rape a whole bunch of people. It's not right if your God says, uh, when you finish killing off all their soldiers, tear babies out of the womb and, and crush their skulls. You know? And these are examples from your Bible. Okay? Um... Next, you go on to say in this fourth point that God has the authority to do with life as he pleases, but atheistic communist leaders do not have th this authority. Okay, um... Atheism and communism are two different things. In fact, I am not a, a communist... I would consider myself more of a capitalist, and uh, most atheists in America uh, lean towards more libertarian views, and, and they, they stray away from, from communism, but uh, 
I could make the argument that quite a bit of what Jesus said directly supports many of the emotional foundations of socialism and communism. Uh, he really loved the poor a lot, and uh, he specifically said that people should give all that they could to the poor because, you know, it's easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than a rich man get to heaven, you know? Um, yeah. It, your association of atheism with communism is very uh, common among fundamentalist Christians who are lean toward the extreme side because the right wing of politics in America is very religious and at the same time very capitalistic and they, they try to paint their enemies as being the opposite of them on both accounts at the same time. But it simply isn't true that atheists would look up to communist leaders as a rule. Okay, so Point number five. And fifth, I don't value in the slightest what an atheist has to say about my faith. Now this is the the argument that you got into with Thunderbolt 94, that he says that if you're going to understand why people reject your God, you should listen to what they're saying. And you being from the point of view that God elects people and if they're not going to heaven, they're not going to heaven, so pff, why should we even have to listen to them? It, it's, it's very troubling. And I'm going to give you another definition, okay? I know you don't like the word creationist when it gets to applied to your uh, beliefs, even when it's true, but I think you're going to like this one even less. Um, here's the definition. A person who is obstinately or intolerantly devoted to his or her own, his or her own, <laughs> I'll start again. A person who is obstinately or intolerantly devoted to his or her own personal opinions and prejudices, especially one exhibiting intolerance and animosity towards those of differing beliefs. That's the definition. And here you have shown that you don't care in the slightest what atheists have to say to you. All right? Uh, you don't care what they have, have to think about uh, your faith. You don't care about uh, the viewpoints of the atheists. They are, you know, dismissible. So you know what the word is that I just defined? Bigot. And it hurts. It hurts to, to hear that applied to people because no one wants to be a bigot. Everyone knows that the word is bad, you know. But here you are. You go on to say, you think I'm becoming more extreme. I say I'm becoming more extreme. I... Pfft. Okay. Okay. You're, you're taking pride in this now, okay? I'm, I'm trying to dissuade you from being an extremist, and you're actually taking pride in being an extremist now to try to defend your position. And it is scary. How extreme are you going to get? Okay, so... You go on to say, I'm only disliked by atheists and non nominal Christians on YouTube whose sole objective seems to, to be gaining atheist approval, like Thunderbolt 94. Um, Thunderbolt 94 and I actually disagree on a lot, like uh, the existence of God, for instance. But uh, I don't think that he's trying to gain people's approval. I think he's just being honest about where he is in his beliefs right now. 
turning me into some kind of fanatic. Well, I can't. I'm not trying to turn you into a fanatic here. I'm trying to dissuade you from being extreme. You're the one who takes when I say you're being extreme and say, I am being extreme. You say I'm extreme. I am. But I'm trying to tell you to not be that way. Okay? I, all I can do is ask, really. Please quit being so extreme. But turning me into some kind of fanatic, while fanatic through misrepresentation of my videos doesn't make me want to listen to what you have to say. Um, I'm not misrepresenting you as a creationist. You have a creationist viewpoint. Um, Nor does injecting snide remarks every now and then. Uh, the, the closest thing that I could uh, find in my video that, w that I could possibly construe as being snide was me saying that your attempt to apply science to your literalist vision of Adam and Eve and the fall of man, um, that is laughable. And it is. And really, I can't even call that snide. So... If you have a problem with me uh, and you think that I made a personal dig at you in that video, that's not what I was trying to do. And if you point it out, I might be willing to apologize and rephrase my position. But I don't think you're going to find it. I think what you're going to find is me stating something about your extremist views and you disagreeing and wanting to dismiss it as being snide. Um... Yeah. So, I think that's it. Um, AV, I still think that you're smart enough to pull through all of this, and uh, maybe one day we can uh, be friends and look back on this and, I don't know, smile. Uh, here's to being more and more tolerant, you know, 